And today is the 17th of May, 2022. Uh, I saw a thing on Facebook yesterday. It's only like 130 some days till Halloween <laughs> left. So uh, this year's flying, isn't it? <laughs> Sweet. So yeah. what you're saying is I should start decorating tomorrow. Absolutely. Yeah. I, <laughs> you know, around here, everybody's already decorated for 4th of July and Memorial Day. So, you know, we're, we're I haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'd like to welcome everybody to the call. We're going to get started with news you can use for the 17th of May, 2022. Uh, going to get right into it. This is going to be some rapid fire stuff today. And actually, this was requested about a month ago. And we said that we would talk about it. We're going to make some predictions on this call this morning about the best markets going forward. But first, I'm going to start off with the least and most affordable housing markets currently right today in the US. So the top 10 least affordable from 10th least affordable to the number one least affordable. Uh, starting off with number 10, Denver, Colorado, least affordable. Now, let me go back and say, before we get started on this, you can make money in any market at any time if you buy right, or if you get uh, either buy right from a cash standpoint, or if you're buy right from a, uh, a transactional engineering standpoint. In other words, get seller finance and things like that. There's always money to be made. So when I'm going to tell you the least affordable, it doesn't mean to stay out of those markets. In fact, I'm in the process of buying a property in one of these markets itself. Now, generally what it means when it's least affordable, it means there's a lot of demand too. So it's not necessarily uh, a bad thing, but nonetheless, this is probably where a lot of starter homes are not going to be sold, but a lot of move up homes in these markets. So number 10 Denver, Colorado. Number nine, Riverside San Bernardino, called the Inland Empire of California, which would be east of Los Angeles and Orange County, uh, out towards the desert. Number eight, Seattle, Washington. Uh, the seventh least affordable market is Miami, Florida. Then we come San Diego, California, Los Angeles, California. Coming into third position is San Francisco, California. Now, San Francisco has had a drop in prices the last two years. Uh, it is still one of the least affordable places. The second uh, least affordable is Honolulu, Hawaii. And the most least affordable, if that makes any sense, the, the, prop, the area of the country that is the least affordable to the most number of people is San Jose, California. Uh, Silicon Valley, for example, home of Apple, uh, Facebook, you know, all these kinds of things. All right, that's the 10 least affordable. Now, the 10 most affordable from the 10th to the literal most affordable home, uh, uh, place to have a home. Uh, number 10, Louisville, Kentucky. Number nine, Kansas City, Missouri. So these are these would be starter home markets, right? So these would be places where people, uh, where more people can buy a home than not buy a home. Doesn't necessarily mean they're the best markets. These are the most affordable markets. So if you're just starting out, you want to own a home, I would look in these communities. Eighth, most affordable, Buffalo, New York. Uh, seven is Cincinnati, Ohio. Then Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, number five is, I'm sorry, number four is St. Louis, Missouri. Number three, Rochester, New York. The second most affordable is Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And before I tell you, I want you guys to put in the chat, what's your guess for the most affordable home, uh, housing market in the U.S. right now? So let's see what everybody says before I announce it. And while you're doing that, I want to tell you that this is, uh, there's a global affordability index that's now being published. Um, and this is uh, probably the third or fourth most affordable uh, home market in the world. So that's a very good home market. Now it's a market where I happen to have some properties. Um, just sometimes you're better off being lucky than good, but it is the most affordable. Any, any guesses, anybody? Nothing? All right, let's crank it up. It is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, number one, most affordable US housing market and probably the third or fourth most affordable housing market in the world. More people can afford to buy a home there than any other place in the country. All right, with that, we're going to go to the predictions. Now, these are the these are going to be what I'm going to predict, and this is based on uh, primarily Yahoo Finance, but also some input from some of the other um, kind of giants who make decent predictions. Now, these are the folks that predicted 
three years ago uh, in 19, Sacramento, California would be the hottest market in the country. Uh, then they predicted that Boise, Idaho, and then last year at Salt Lake City, Utah. And those have all come true, all three of those. So we're gonna go uh, right here. And these are not any particular order. So I'm gonna give them to you just in general. These are gonna be the hottest markets, but I would suspect that one of the best markets uh, or the hottest, the hottest two or three are gonna be on this list of, I think there's 15 here. Um, so predictions for the next year, this, this one is projecting a 20.4% rise in home prices. Some markets, a lot of markets are dropping now. Some are staying steady. Some are creeping up a little. This one's projected to go up 20.4%. Roseburg, Oregon. These are not in order. Uh, next one, Auburn, Alabama, projected to go up 19.4% in price. Next one, Fayetteville, Arkansas, 23.1%. Uh, next, we have Knoxville, Tennessee, 23.1% also increase. Knoxville is an awesome market. Um, Dallas, believe it or not, Dallas is, in my opinion, actually overheated, but they're still saying because of the cheap cost of housing in Texas uh, that it's most affordable. Now, what they haven't taken into consideration is Texas horrendous property tax rate. Tucson, Arizona, 21.5% increase for the next 12 months. Pueblo, Colorado, 22.6%. Fort Worth, Texas, 22.4%. Lakeland, Florida, which is between uh, Orlando on the east and Tampa on the west. It's on four, the, the I-4, which goes between those two, 25.6%. That looks like the best one so far. Uh, Daytona Beach, Florida, 25.5%. Yuma, Arizona, 24.1%. Crossville, Tennessee, 24.1%. Pocatello, Idaho, 21.6%. That's kind of more Eastern or Southeastern Idaho. Jacksonville, Florida, 21.8%. Ocala, Florida, or Ocala, 25.6%. Cooksville, Tennessee, 22.4%. Athens, Georgia, 20.3%. Klamath Falls, Oregon, 19.9%. Savannah, Georgia, 22% even. Huntsville, Alabama, 20.6%. Clarksville, 20, uh, Clarksville, Tennessee, 20% even. And Albuquerque, New Mexico, 19%. And that is it for the list. So it looked like Florida's got quite a few. Tennessee's got quite a few. Alabama's got uh, a good chunk there. And then they're scattered around in different places, uh, specific cities here and there. And how you'd play that is if you wanted to buy a property to buy and hold for a long period of time, even if you paid market price today, the chances are most of these properties would be up 20% a year from now. So that doesn't mean that they'll stay there, but you know, you probably, all things being equal, if you can't time a market perfectly and you have to pay top of the market, you're still gonna get a, a good increase or appreciation rate. Also, these would be good property, good property markets to flip properties in. Uh, if you buy something now and flip it, the chances are when you sell it, it will be worth more than it would have comped out today. So your R today might be 200. And if you sold it in six months, it might be 220 or something like that. So they would be safe markets in my opinion. In fact, I am literally uh, rehabbing in one or more of those markets right now. Uh, those would be good markets to, to take a short to midterm look at and they're relatively safe. They also have decent affordability. So. Um, all right, that's that's our lists for today uh, for news you can use. So hopefully that information will be good. As always, we'll let you know next year how these predictions come out um, and what they look like. But it looked like there's some decent deals in there. Uh, like I said, Florida, Tennessee, 
Alabama uh, and scattered around other single cities like Oklahoma City and Pocatello, Idaho, those kind of things. Notice there's nothing for California uh, in there, Oregon, Washington, New York, New England, nothing in there. So once again, these are, these are good bread and butter type property markets. And this is where I would uh, you know, focus your effort and energy if you want to focus on a single market. All right.